we've discovered Kepler 22b, a small exoplanet in the Cygnus constellation. Seems like nothing important, right? But it's actually a big deal. This is the first planet located in the habitable zone that was found by the Kepler telescope. In other words, there may be water on this planet, and if there's water, there may be life. Kepler 22b can become our new potential home. So let's take a closer look at it. Actually, discovering new planets is not easy at all. Not all of them can be seen through our super cool telescopes, even the almighty Hubble. Sometimes the stars are so small and dim that it's really hard to find them on a map. The same thing happened with Kepler 22. In such cases, scientists have to use a special method. First, they take a bunch of photos of the star in different periods of time. Then, they look at them and think, hmm, are there any dark dots on this star somewhere? And if they find one, that might be a planet. These photos actually help us to discover some very important stuff. Like, first of all, this planet exists. Secondly, here is its size, radius, and proximity to the star. And finally, will we be able to live there? Now we know that Kepler 22b is very similar to our planet and could potentially become a second Earth. It's also very close to us, only 635 light years away. Yeah, it's about three quadrillion miles, but this is one of the closest options. Kepler 22, the star of Kepler 22b, is a yellow dwarf. It's very, very similar to our sun. The same size, the same radius, even the age is almost the same. 4 billion years. The difference is only in luminosity. It's about 20% dimmer than the sun. So, no matter how much you strain your eyes, you won't see this star in the night sky. The planet Kepler 22b is about 2.4 times larger than our Earth, and that's pretty good. More radius means more potential water and space to live. Although going from one city to another would take a while. It's scary to even imagine a three-day long plane flight. We don't know the exact mass of this planet, but scientists think it's bigger than Earth's. Actually, the mass of Kepler 22b can be up to 36 times greater than that of our planet. What does it mean? Vigorous gravity. If the planet is 36 times heavier than Earth, then gravity there will be about six times stronger. Can you barely lift 20 pounds of potatoes? Try 120. Not to mention that you yourself can become much heavier on that planet. You'll have to get incredibly pumped up just to walk there. You have to literally turn yourself into a bodybuilder just to get to work. The worst thing is that with such gravity, it'd be incredibly difficult for plants to survive there. They'd need at least a little freedom to rise up from the ground. And animals. Our dogs and cats would have to turn into little balls of muscle to survive there. But if this planet has its own animals or other inhabitants, we can roughly imagine what they may look like. They probably have a lot of legs to make moving easier. They aren't really tall, but they're very massive and extremely strong. Hmm, muscular giant spiders? Could be worse, I guess. The good news is that this is all unconfirmed information. If we're very lucky and gravity there turns out to be just a bit stronger than Earth's, then of course, it'll be much easier to live there. The next thing we know about Kepler 22b is that it's about 15% closer to its star than we are to the sun. If Kepler 22b existed in our solar system, it would be located somewhere between Earth and Venus. Does that mean we're all going to burn? No, silly. As I mentioned before, the star Kepler 22 is pretty cold, just some 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why we can assume that the temperatures on Kepler 22b will be about the same as we have on Earth. If the planet orbits its star the same way Earth orbits the sun, which we don't actually know, Kepler 22b can rotate around its star on its side, like, for example, Uranus. What? Didn't you know Uranus is actually lying on its side? Also, look at its rings. Yes, Uranus also has rings, like Saturn, but they're vertical. The universe is truly a mysterious place. So, 
If Kepler-22b is really something like that, then the weather on the planet will be, to put it mildly, not very good. Incredibly cold winters will be regularly followed by hot summers. And, just like with tidally locked planets, we'd be able to live more or less comfortably only on the narrow piece of land between these two crazy sides. Let's hope that this is not the case and the planet rotates normally. But it's not all that bad. Studies show that there may be an ocean on Kepler-22b. You already know that water means life, but in this case, it's also a big plus because a planet covered by an ocean always has more stable temperatures. The water absorbs some of the heat and distributes it evenly across the planet. The hot parts cool down and the icy ones warm up. By the way, that's exactly what happened to Earth billions of years ago. When our planet started getting its first little puddles, our beloved moon helped these puddles to spread all over the planet. Thanks to this, a burning horror that used to be our Earth turned into a cute little ball full of life. So if Kepler-22b has water but no atmosphere, scientists think that the average temperature there could be around 12 degrees Fahrenheit. But if there's also an Earth-like atmosphere, then the temperature can reach 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be nice. And finally, one year there is equal to 290 Earth days, about nine months. The planet has no natural satellites, so unfortunately, we'd have to say goodbye to a beautiful view of the moon. On the bright side, we'd probably be able to see the sun as a distant little star. We could admire it in the night sky, remembering our home, while not hiding from giant spiders. And this is all that we know at the moment. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to explore such planets, so there's a lot of very important data that we don't know. For example, what kind of planet is this anyway? Yep, we're missing the most important information about Kepler-22b. We don't know if it's a rocky planet or not. And if not, then all the previously mentioned information means nothing. It may turn out to be a gas planet, or a planet covered with gas but with a solid core, like Neptune, or a water world covered with a giant ocean. In this case, it better be a water planet. Then at least we could build some kind of underwater city there. We could filter the water and eat fish until we evolve into an amphibious species. Does it even count as evolution if we go back to our roots? Scientists, however, think that Kepler-22b may turn out to be a Neptune-like planet. Some astronomers have even assigned the planet to a category of mini-Neptunes. Yes, this is a real planetary category. But this hasn't been proven yet. But even if, fortunately for us, Kepler-22b turns out to be a rocky planet, we still don't know what the atmosphere is like there. Does it exist at all? What if it turns out to be something like the atmosphere of Venus? which is more toxic than your ex. Then we'd have to dig deep underground to somehow survive on this planet. And then we'd have to come up with a heat source because it's pretty cold underground. Yeah, let's hope this won't be the case. There are many possibilities with Kepler-22b. So far, we don't have a clear answer, but let's hope that scientists will find it before we load the first people into shuttles and send them to conquer Kepler-22b. That would be awkward if it turns out to be a gas planet, or something like that. An exoplanet is any planet inside our solar system. Some of them are free-floating. Those are called rogue planets. They move around the galactic center. Others orbit their host star, or two. For the first time, astronomers discovered exoplanets in the 1990s. Since then, scientists have found thousands of them. And now, you can sneak a peek too. Spoiler alert! Some exoplanets are pretty bizarre. Other resemble our home planet and could probably support life. The closest to Earth exoplanet is Proxima Centauri b. It's a mere 4.2 light years away from Earth. Recently, astronomers have found out that this world might resemble Earth even more than previously thought. It's only 17% more massive than our home planet. It orbits a star that is dimmer and less massive than the Sun. Proxima Centauri b is in the middle of the star's habitable zone. This means that chances are liquid water and life might exist on the planet. 
It looks like the exoplanet is tidally locked with its parent star. This means one of its sides faces the star at all times, and the other is always in the darkness. Scientists haven't figured out yet whether the planet has an atmosphere. It's traveling too close to its star and completes one orbit within 11 Earth days. The radiation from the star might be pulling the planet's air away. If this is the case, Proxima Centauri b isn't likely to have liquid water on its surface. Gleiss 832c is 16 light years away from Earth. In the cosmic scheme of things, it's a stone's throw away. This exoplanet is five times as massive as Earth and travels much closer to its parent star. That's why a year on this planet lasts a mere 36 days. But since this star is a red dwarf, much cooler and dimmer than the Sun, Gliese 832c gets as much light and heat as our planet does. At the same time, it's still unclear if Gliese 832c is similar to Earth. It probably has a much thicker atmosphere that creates a runaway greenhouse effect. This phenomenon occurs when a planet absorbs more heat from its host star than it can release back into space. This means that Gliese 832c is more likely to resemble scorching hot Venus rather than relatively cool Earth. Another Earth-like planet, TOI 700d, is 100 light years away from us in the constellation Dorado. It orbits a small and rather cool dwarf star that is about 40% of the mass and size of the Sun. Its surface temperature is half as high as that of our star. The outermost planet, which is the very TOI 700d, is almost the size of Earth. It also sits in the habitable zone of its parent star. No flares from TOI 700 reach the planet. This increases the chances of the exoplanet being habitable. This means it can potentially develop and maintain life. Scientists don't know for sure the exact conditions on the surface of the planet. But one of the computer simulations they've created shows a planet covered with an ocean. It has a very dense atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Astronomers think a similar atmosphere surrounded Mars when it was a young planet. But another 3D model shows TOI 700d as an all-land, cloudless world. That's what our Earth would probably look like if it wasn't covered with oceans. Winds on TOI 700d move away from the night side of the planet and meet in the area that directly faces the star. There is an exoplanet that stands out among the rest because of its awesome magenta color. You can find this world in the Virgo constellation. The planet is called Gliese 504b. The distance between this planet and its parent star is nine times the distance between the Sun and Jupiter. The planet formed relatively recently and is still glowing with heat. That's why its surface looks pinkish. Just 20 light years away from the Sun, which isn't such a great distance when we talk about space, a bizarre rogue planet is roaming our home Milky Way galaxy. But even though this planet doesn't orbit any star, it still has an incredibly powerful magnetic field. It's 4 million times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. The exoplanet also produces amazing auroras. When it was discovered in 2016, astronomers were almost sure they had detected a brown dwarf, which is an object too large to be a planet and too small to be a star. But later, scientists received proof that the space object wasn't big enough to be a brown dwarf. The planet sure is a mammoth among its peers. It's 1.2 times as wide as the largest planet of the solar system, Jupiter, and more than 12 times as heavy. Astronomers think the exceptional strong magnetic field helps the planet produce the auroras. But the most curious thing is that they're generated in a different way than auroras on Earth. It might be because the exoplanet's moon helps the planet create these light shows. If you traveled 20,000 light years away from Earth, you'd come close to a red dwarf in the Sagittarius constellation. Such stars are very cool and small. Quite far away from this cold star, there's a planet. The distance between this world and its host star is so great that the planet receives very little heat. It's one of the coldest planets ever detected. The average surface temperature on the planet is lower than negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit. 
That's why the entire planet is covered with a thick layer of ice. If you stepped onto its surface, you'd see nothing but glaciers, plains, and mountains of ice. And still, astronomers claim life might exist deep beneath the frozen surface. All because the core of the planet is likely to generate enough heat to melt some of its inner ice. In this case, there would be an enormous subsurface ocean, maybe even swarming with bizarre life forms on the planet. One of the oldest exoplanets we know about is PCR B162026b. It's about 12.7 billion years old. It's almost three times as old as Earth, which appeared 4.5 billion years ago. This also means that the Genesis planet formed only about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The planet is so old that its two parent stars have had enough time to evolve into a white dwarf and a pulsar, making almost 100 revolutions per second. Sunrises on this planet must look awesome! I bet the next exoplanet isn't like any other you might have seen before. It's often called Super Saturn, or Saturn on steroids. That's because J1407b has a colossal system of rings. They're 640 times as large as those of Saturn. The bizarre world is 434 light years away from Earth. It's the only planet we know about that has rings similar to Saturn's. If you moved J1407b to our solar system and replaced Saturn with it, its rings would look many times larger than a full moon. Astronomers have noticed a gap halfway through the planet's rings. The chances are high that an exomoon the size of Mars orbits the planet somewhere within this gap. If you lived on this moon, you'd have an awesome view every time you looked up into the sky. This exoplanet, called WASP-12b, munches on the light coming from its star. It's one of the darkest worlds people know about. All because its day side consumes light rather than reflects it back into space. The planet is giant, twice the size of Jupiter, and it traps more than 94% of the light that reaches its atmosphere. This is likely to be the main reason for the insane temperatures on the surface of the planet. They can rise up to 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost half as hot as the surface of the Sun. WASP-12b travels so close to its host star that it needs just one day to complete one orbit. Its night side isn't as hot as the day side, a mere 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of this difference in temperature, water vapor and clouds gather above the surface of the planet. From time to time, swirls of material from the planet's superheated atmosphere spill onto its star. About 4,000 light-years away from Earth, there's an exoplanet that might be one enormous diamond. It's five times the size of our planet, but needs only two hours and ten minutes to orbit its parent star. It's a pulsar rotating at a rate of 10,000 times a minute. The planet is denser than any other we've discovered so far. It consists mostly of carbon, which is so dense that astronomers think it might be crystalline. If it was true, it could mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. On WASP-76b, it rains iron on the night side of the planet, and the temperature on the daytime side rises up to 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to vaporize most metals. This exoplanet is a bit smaller than Jupiter and located 640 light-years away from Earth. Such terrifying weather conditions in this world are caused by its unusual orbit. The distance between WASP-76b and its parent star is 10 times shorter than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. That's why the star and the huge planet are tidally locked. One side of WASP-76b always faces the star, and the other side is always pitch black. This bright blue exoplanet sits 62 years away from Earth. A bit larger than Jupiter, it looks calm and peaceful. Its blue color might remind you of our home planet. But this familiar appearance conceals the planet's horrifying nature. The beautiful hue comes from silicate atoms and particles that make up the atmosphere. But the wind speed on the planet can reach 5,400 miles per hour. That's seven times the speed of sound. 
The temperature there can rise up to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But this isn't the worst. In this bizarre world, it rains glass, sideways. So it's probably not the place where you'd like to spend your vacation. We've been focusing on trying to find life on Mars so much, while there is this gem waiting to be explored. This planet is the sixth farthest from the Sun and the second largest in the solar system. You'll find it right behind Jupiter. I'm talking about Saturn, or as they sometimes call it, the jewel of the solar system. It's so different from our planet. First of all, you wouldn't be able to stand there. While Earth consists of rock and other tough stuff, this planet is like a giant ball, mostly made of gases. If you found a swimming pool huge enough to fit Saturn, you could see the planet floating in the water. No wonder, Saturn is the least dense planet in the solar system. It also contains a lot of helium. You know, the gas you put in balloons to make them hover in the air. Saturn is a very windy planet. Winds there are more than four times stronger than the ones we have on Earth. A day over there lasts 10 hours and 14 minutes because Saturn spins on its axis pretty fast. But the planet takes its time while going around the Sun. A year there equals 29 Earth years. Saturn's radius is more than 36,000 miles. It means the gas giant is nine times wider than our planet. If Earth was the size of a nickel, Saturn would be as big as a volleyball. Even though some of our planets in our solar system also have rings, Saturn's are the most spectacular ones. You can even see its rings from Earth. And no, you don't have to be a scientist with insanely expensive equipment. All you need is a small telescope. Saturn's rings are not firm. They are made of pieces of dust, rock, and ice. Some of them are as small as grains of sand, and some as big as a house or even a mountain. These are actually bits of asteroids, comets, and shattered moons that fell apart before reaching Saturn. They could be torn into pieces by the planet's powerful gravitational pull. Saturn has over 50 moons, and recently, scientists have discovered some unusual hydrothermal activity on one of them. Enceladus is Saturn's sixth biggest moon. It has four tiger stripes close to one of its poles. Researchers have found that there is an ocean underneath these stripes. Water and ice erupt from that area. So now, we can't but wonder, maybe there's life out there. In the oceans on Earth, some forms of life gather around similar hydrothermal vents. They feed on the chemicals there, same as plants on the surface do with sunlight. And not only that, some of the oldest microbial life on our planet feed on the same energy as the one produced beneath the ocean's surface on Enceladus. It could potentially mean there's life developing there right now. Of course, it takes millions and millions of years for even the simplest organisms to appear. But hopefully, scientists will need less time to find more complex forms of life. There are millions of exoplanets out there in space, and scientists have been searching for those that could be potentially habitable. Exoplanets are planets orbiting a star outside of our solar system. Dwarf stars are similar, less luminous than the Sun. They sometimes live for more than 10 billion years. That's enough time for a living organism to develop and evolve into a more complex form. Life might appear on the planets orbiting such dwarf stars, or, like with Saturn, on one of their moons. And here it is, Gliese 876b, that orbits the red dwarf star Gliese 876. This planet is mostly a mystery, but scientists assume this is a gas giant that has no solid surface. They believe its atmosphere doesn't have clouds but there might be water in its liquid form on the planet's surface. T Gardens B orbits a red dwarf that's around 12 light years away from our solar system. The planet's mass is just a bit higher than that of Earth. Scientists think it may have a rocky surface. The planet needs around five days to complete its orbit. It means that one year on T Gardens B is actually shorter than one week on Earth. Somewhere far, far away, there's another potentially habitable planet named Kepler-1638b. Okay, to be more precise, it's 3,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. This planet is four times as heavy as Earth and twice as wide. It needs almost 260 days to complete one orbit around its star. The gravity on this planet is stronger than that on Earth. It wouldn't be an easy feat to jump on its surface. One more Kepler coming along. This time, it's Kepler-62e, a planet that's more than one and a half times the size of Earth. Scientists believe this one has a warm, humid, and hospitable atmosphere with cloudy skies. There are 1,200 light years between Earth and this planet, 
Kepler-62e needs 122 days to orbit its red dwarf star. Its neighbor, Kepler-62f, is another potentially habitable zone. It's a world around 40% bigger than Earth. Scientists think this planet might be covered in water. The oceans on our planet are full of interesting creatures and organisms of all sizes. So the chances are, this planet also hides some intriguing living beings. Or at least, it has the potential to develop life. When we say habitable, it doesn't mean life definitely exists there. It just means there are conditions for some forms of life to develop. LHS 1140b is a planet located in one of the potentially habitable zones. Unlike its gas companions, it's solid and quite rocky. The planet's radius is 60% larger than that of Earth, and its mass is seven times bigger. It's one of the densest planets found out there. Since the planet has a big mass, an atmosphere there must be rather thick. Plus, gravity on its surface is much stronger than here on Earth. That's why you would likely have problems just standing on that planet. Hello and greetings from TRAPPIST-1, an ultra-cool dwarf in the constellation Aquarius. It's around 39 light-years away from us. Seven Earth-sized rocky planets are orbiting in the star's habitable zone. All of them can potentially have some water on their surfaces. The temperature on these planets is more or less similar to that on Earth. On the Moon, gravity is only 16% of what we have on our home planet. That's why the astronauts could hardly control their movements when they visited our natural satellite. But when it comes to the gravity on TRAPPIST-1 planets, you would probably feel good and comfortable there. And Kepler once again. This time it's Kepler-452b. It's a rocky planet 60% larger than Earth. Its parent star is similar to our Sun. This planet has actually spent around 6 billion years in the habitable zone, while Earth has been there for a mere 4.5 billion years. This planet needs 385 days to orbit Kepler-452. This star is around 20% brighter than our Sun, but has the same temperature. The whole system is very far from our little oasis. It would take you 28 million years to get there. And now, how about KOI 7711.01? It's another intriguing world 1,700 light years away from us. This planet is only 30% bigger than Earth. It gets almost the same amount of heat as we receive from our Sun. Sometime in the future, People might start colonizing the galaxy. They would be looking for new planets to live on. Then we'd certainly have to make really long trips. And maybe one day, we'd reach Proxima Centauri. It's a nearby star that has a couple of planets we could potentially inhabit, like Proxima Centauri b. It's around four light years away from Earth. And it doesn't sound that far at first, but it actually is. It would take about 6,300 years to travel there, if we use the technologies that are available these days. It would mean many, many generations to make a trip like that. And it would take even longer to finally inhabit that new world. People would be born and raised on spaceships. They would live their lives there without ever seeing either Earth or the planet they're heading to. Instead of trees, mountains, and rivers, there would be only the dark nothingness of faraway galaxies spreading in front of them. They would never be able to wander unknown streets, breathe in the fresh air, feel the wind, the only place for them to travel to would be another part of the ship. Certainly, such a journey wouldn't be simple, but it would pay off if people managed to build some more beautiful worlds like the one we have here on Earth. Is that even possible? Time will tell. TRES 2b, or not to be, is a planet where night never ends. And it's not your regular night with stars shining in the beautiful skies. Here, it's pitch dark and scorching hot. TRES-2b is a gas giant, roughly one and a half times more massive than Jupiter, and its surface absorbs light better than charcoal. It might also have a faint dark red glow because of its burning air, which is as hot as fresh lava. Lovely. In the star system of 55 Cancri, there are five planets, four of which are gas giants similar to Jupiter and Saturn. But the fifth one, or rather the first, because it's closest to the star, is different in a most horrible way. 55 Cancri E is so close to its sun that half the planet's surface is a literal ocean of molten lava. The other half is in eternal darkness because it never sees the sun. The planet is always turned to its star on one side. And between the scorching and the dark, there's the twilight zone, a thin strip of gloomy nothingness. That's a getaway spot. 
HD 189377b, well, I'm not going to say that again, is the only exoplanet in the orbit of its star. And at first glance, it looks quite pretty, blue and white swirls making up wondrous patterns on the surface. But these pleasant colors actually come from hard silicate particles in the planet's atmosphere, which means it rains glass here. But the worst is that winds reach the speed of 5,400 miles per hour, or almost Mach 7. Well, for comparison, the fastest wind speed on Earth was 254 miles per hour, over 20 times less. Thus, the glass falling from the sky travels horizontally at hypersonic speeds, shredding everything in its path. Better duck! The next system, whose name I won't even try to pronounce, um, this one, has three exoplanets, which are all being slowly destroyed by their own star. It happens because that star is not a regular. It's a pulsar, a rapidly spinning core of an exploded star. It creates powerful electromagnetic pulses in several directions while rotating at several thousand times per second. As a result, the planets orbiting this deceased star are slowly being eaten away and will eventually disappear entirely. Kepler 70, hey, I can say that one, is a hot blue dwarf star that exploded into a red giant some 18 million years ago. At the time, it was orbited by at least two planets, the closer of which was a Jupiter-like gas giant. Its name was Kepler 70b, and it still exists. But the overgrown star consumed it and transformed it into a blazing hot rocky world. Right now, it's one of the hottest planets ever discovered. Its temperature is higher than the surface of our sun. It was lucky to survive spending time inside the star, but it's evaporating now and will probably be no more in the near future. WASP-12b is one of the weirdest and saddest planets out there. The enormous gravity of its star, combined with the planets consisting mostly of gas, result in the star slowly devouring its protege. Uh, so pal, like, uh, what's eating you? My mother. WASP-12b has already taken the form of an egg, stretched toward its merciless sun, and it's unable to do anything with its condition. In another 10 million years, the planet will inevitably succumb to the voracious star's appetite. Hey, you asked. If you ever wondered what it's like to walk on ice and hot coals at the same time, Gliese 436b is a planet that would give you a vivid example. Being extremely close to its sun, the Neptune-sized exoplanet boasts temperatures hotter than a blazing oven. And yet, it's covered in ice, which burns incessantly. This ice is much denser due to the enormous gravity of the planet, staying solid even under extreme conditions and not melting away. No list of frightening worlds could do without mentioning Venus, the Earth's evil twin. <laughs> the second planet from the Sun has an atmosphere so thick and full of clouds that its surface is much hotter than that of Mercury. Volcanic eruptions constantly thrash Venus. Its gravity is almost a hundred times stronger than ours. And those clouds I mentioned are not made of water, but of sulfuric acid, which condenses and rains down on the ground, adding to the inferno. But even if you were brave, or crazy, enough to try to pass through these clouds, you probably couldn't. The winds up there are as strong as some of the most powerful hurricanes back on Earth. Here we have a very long name for a very, very cold planet. Although the host star is not too far away, it's a small and rather cool red dwarf whose light and heat barely even reach the planet. The temperatures out there fall as low as minus 370 degrees, which is only marginally warmer than absolute zero. The exoplanet is thus dark, gloomy, and covered in eternal ice that never thaws. I thought I thaw that, Thumworth. Still, if it has a rocky core, it might generate some heat. So there's a chance that deep below the frozen surface, some unknown alien things might lurk. Dimidium, located roughly 50 light years away from our solar system, is a planet hostile to any living thing on many accounts. It's tidally locked to its sun, which means one of its sides is always facing the star, while the other is always turned away. The hot side is heated to over 1,800 degrees, perpetually blown over with winds reaching 600 miles per hour. And that's winter. Well, actually, I don't know that. 
Despite dimidium being a gas giant, it has a large amount of iron in it, which melts and evaporates in the atmosphere, creating clouds. And when those cool down, they fall on the surface in the infernal rain of molten iron. That'll test your metal. Oxygen is usually viewed as an element that might bring life to a planet, but this is definitely not the case for Osiris. Scientists were shocked to find oxygen on this planet, or rather around it, because it's eight times closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun. This extreme distance makes Osiris a living melting pot, where anything that could burn will. It's also responsible for a very short orbit of the planet around the star. A year on Osiris is just three and a half days on Earth. To boot, the atmosphere of the planet is constantly blown and melted away by the heat from its sun. Vacation? Nah, let's keep looking. Karat Exo 3b is neither as hot nor as cold as some of the others on this list, but it's terrifying in its own more insidious way. It's a gas giant similar in size to Jupiter, yet 20 times denser. This makes this exoplanet's gravity weigh down on everything on its surface 50 times more than it would on Earth. Stepping on it would be your ultimate doom, because you'd be immediately crushed by the density of its atmosphere. Karat 7b is another oven-like world. Its day-to-day -day temperature is over 4,000 degrees. Combined with the rocky surface, it presents an infernal landscape. The rocks on the ground bubble and boil, evaporating in the atmosphere where they cool down and eventually fall back on the surface in a brimstone rain. The saddest thing about Karat 7b is that it might have once been a gas giant whose atmosphere melted away from the heat, leaving only the scorched core.